and welcome to a new episode of our Crafters Tale podcast. My name is Nina and I'm coming to you from southern Sweden. This is a podcast about mainly about knitting, um, about some spinning, sewing and yeah some other um, textile um, crafts. <laughs> Crafting is the like the essence of my life. I I love it. I do it every day and I hope I can do it until I die. <laughs> and yeah, that includes many different crafts. I cannot commit to one craft. I have to do lots of different things. But yeah, in winter it's it's mostly knitting, but I also do many other crafts like sewing, embroidery, spinning, um carving wood carving and yeah i actually found um, a, a free uh, loom an old loom at marketplace the other day look Luke, because my partner got for me and um, picked up for me and it's really big and it was like eight eight years ago i did weaving last but i went i really want to give it a try again and uh, i have a great book about weaving and all the steps so I think I can yeah figure it out how to put up a, a loom and yeah, start weaving uh, but I have to get some more things um, I don't know what to call them in English but yeah different parts you need for, to be able to to weave and of course the yarn so yeah I'm really excited about it I hope I can get started someday in winter when everything has slowed down yeah but it would be so cool to start weaving again my own fabrics and yeah rugs and some such 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 things maybe yeah but let's start by talking about um, my first finished object this is the Austachen sweater it's by Erika Ober a Swedish designer and unfortunately it pattern is only available in her book I think this book she has several books but I think this one is um, Sticker Tivadas I'm not sure I will can link it down below um, but yeah I really really love it I started last year I borrowed the book at the library because I wanted to knit this this sweater my mom had knitted this as well and it's really popular popular design in in sweden many swedish um yeah podcasters have knitted this as well and uh, it's, it's really really beautiful it's great for scrap yarn so all the colors in the yoke are scrap yarns so the rust and uh, the dark almost black and some beige i have in here are all from my modern Juana cardigan I knitted a couple of years ago and they were um, the BC Shetland yarn so it's a light fingering I think it has like 600 meters per gram so it's really thin so I paired it with some silk mohair I don't know if you can see that you just get a little bit um, thicker so it would be more like um, the the base I used is Rauma Finol. Rauma Finol has, I think, 350 meters, something like that, or 375 meters. Not not quite 400 meters per 100 grams, so it's quite a bit thicker. And then I also used some Jameson's Spin Drift. And this beautiful uh, blue one is from a Swedish dyer, Frivalboy. She's not dying anymore, she, um, so it, it's not available anymore, this yarn. But I think it's it's so, super soft. It's I think it was a um, BFL um, Gotland mix. And it's really beautiful in this beautiful um, color. I don't know what we call this color. I think it, there's a special name for it. I don't cannot come don't know rem remember it now. But yeah. And yeah, I, it's a top down sweater. 
and I was really I started last year and I was really tired of the yoke because I knitted this on the yokes knitted on 3.5 millimeter needles and then yeah you see it's it's knitted in with two colors not almost every row and then they all also um, knit and purl knit and purl st stitches and color work stranded color work and it took me so such a long time and when I was finished with the yoke I just um, I lost interest a little bit uh, because then I you had to switch to three millimeter needles on the stocking net and it just took forever and then I um, yeah it was winter was almost done and I didn't feel for con to continue so I put it aside and now I picked it up again I thought no now I will finish it for autumn I think it will be perfect for autumn all the colors I really love them for the autumn and so I picked it up again and knitted and then made it quite cropped um, so not so long and I, I think sometimes <laughs> during the winter I needed my three millimeter needles and I switched them out just the tips to two pint and when I resumed this project I didn't notice that so I just kept on knitting until I noticed that uh, it was 2.75 millimeter needles so I knitted this entire stock knit bit in 2.75 and it took so long time and then the ribbing I made in knitted in 2.5 millimeter needles and yeah but I'm really happy because I don't have I think I only have one other thing like fingering weight yarn um, sweater in this um, gauge so I'm really happy and I when I have kn had knitted the sleeves I th I th the sleeves was were a little bit too big up here I didn't like the how they looked so I when I blocked it I first felted them a little bit just, and I wrote them between my hands and just felt them a little bit so they would be more snug and now I'm really happy how it looks and yeah I just they the sleeves were they turned out really like fluffy because I felt them a bit so I did it on the body as well just a tiny bit so to get this really felted cozy feeling and I love it so much I'm wearing this sweater like all the all the time almost every day and to my uh, over skirt uh, dresses and to skirts and it's just so perfect for the sweater right now I can wear it inside and it's not too warm and not too cold and I outside I can just throw jacket over and it's it's perfect and I really in love with the colors and yeah, I'm so, so happy with that. Um, yeah, that was everything I had to say about the sweater. Uh, the only thing I'm not, I would do differently if I would knit this again, is to have some shaping, neck shaping, because this is, has no short rows in the back. Uh, so it creeps up a little bit uh, here and I have to pull it down a little bit um, and I would have liked to have yeah some some short row shaping to lift it a little bit back and yeah that it's okay I don't mind too much but if I would knit it again I would probably do some some shaping in the in the back another finished object is um, some slippers I made for Lucas and they look like this they have been felted in the washing machine and they are just so cozy I've knitted them in the free teeth scarn by Sandness and I, right now I'm knitting on a pair for myself as well um, I already you see finished one for myself <laughs> not have to sew it together in the heel and then I will yeah wash it in the washing machine 
you knit it like this, it's double. So you knit in a round and then you divide the stitches and you can knit one foot at a time, then you put them together and yeah. Uh, in the it's a free pattern by Sandness and I think knitting traditions um um she has a translation for for the slippers. I will see if I can find that episode and link it uh, down below. But I think she translated it in, into English and it's a really, really fast knit. I'm knitting these on 5.5 millimeter needles and yeah, it goes really, really fast and it's fun. And I started with Likas because I thought then it's only will only get faster, but then I knit the first, the biggest one first and then mine and then I will knit a red pair for, for Saga as well. I think Oda is still too small. I think the smallest size is like 25. Um, like in shoe size, I don't know what is in the US, but yeah, I think they really look really cute in red. And mine I will knit in this beautiful beige color um, because I received this beautiful book in the post. I had ordered it, um, pre-ordered it already in like, late August and it's of course the new book by Leine from Judith Gumlich. She's a German, um, yeah she's German so I ordered the book in, in German and it's just so beautiful. The book is called um, Embroidery on Knits in English and I, it's just just so inspiring and when I received it and I looked through all my knits that for sweaters I could use for embroidery and I didn't have so many plain like sweaters or cardigans I wanted to to um, embroider on so when I decided to knit a pair of slippers I um, yeah you choose chose this color because I wanted to to make some beautiful embroidery on those and I can show you some pictures that I really love like this one all the the bugs and moths and yeah maybe I will make put a little moth on there or something and also this picture let me see if I can find it this is also so cute, maybe for a cardigan for Saga someday. But what I love the most is this fern. I think it's so pretty. And I will come to that soon. I start a new project because I want to embroider this on. I will show in a minute. Yeah, but this book is just so beautiful and so many yeah just a big inspirational book I think I can really recommend it if you like embroidery or want to learn more there's lots of information in the beginning how to embroider what to think about what yarn you can use and so on so lots of information and you get this um, big sheet with all the patterns and I actually ordered some, like this water, yeah, and I ordered some solo, solo fleece, soluble and, and, and water to use um, um, for the embroidery. Yeah, and I can't wait to, to do that. Um, I'm really excited. Another finished object that you have seen before, not finished, but yeah, I've shown, this, shown it to you before in, the, in this podcast, is my new shawl design. It's now finished and yeah, it turned out so beautiful and big. And this is knitted with Nitiden yarn. Um, in the colors Cruzidule, it's the it's the blue one, 
and the beautiful brown one is um, Lean Erath. And yeah, I just love it. It's really warm and soft and squishy and yeah, I'm really happy. So this is called the uh, uh, Flex Bloom Shawl because I was inspired by a linen, the flex um, plant and the flowers and the, the seed pods actually have some linen pods here that's dried um, flex and the pods you can hear it rustle they have um, the linseed linseeds inside yeah so this is the inspiration for this design uh, and I'm really happy how it turned out I think the two colors together look really beautiful and yeah I'm riding on the pattern right now I'm not so fast when it comes to pattern riding right now because yeah um, I'm at home with my children so I don't have so much time during the day and in the evenings I'm often so exhausted that I don't have the energy to sit and write patterns but hopefully I can yeah release it um, soon and I'll go to get it out for test knitting first but yeah I'm really really happy it's knitted in two strands um, New Tiden and I used I had two cakes of the brown and one cake of the blue and you don't need much of the of the second color but I used up everything of the of the brown one and yeah it, it's got really big I blocked it quite aggressively to get out some length and to make it more drapey and yeah it's just beautiful and yeah it's you start up here with um mm, how do you call it yeah and then you you increase mm, in the middle and up here so that's triangular shawl and it's really fun fun pattern and yeah i really love it um, yeah, so that was my second finished object. Do I have one more? No, I don't think so. The slippers and the sweater, yeah, were all my three finished objects. Uh, yeah, so let's go on to works in progresses. And the first work in progress I have is quite unexpected, I think. <laughs> I don't have mentioned it at all last episode when I talked about my fall plants but I saw the pattern um, on Instagram and I just thought that's perfect for me I have to knit it and I bought a pattern and I I searched for some yarn for some scrap yarn and I started immediately and it's this let's see I will show you <laughs> belly bag and this is a Swedish pattern called Dagny Morgveske. I think uh, I think it's only in Swedish, unfortunately. I don't know if she maybe will translate it into English someday, but it's really fun. And you need only one skein of like a DK weight yarn. I used. Um, the yarn I'm usually dying on. It um, has 300 meters per 100 grams. It's a German organic merino um, yarn. Not at the softest, but when you wash it and wear it, it gets softer and softer. But right now it doesn't feel, it's quite rustic. It's not scratchy, but quite rustic. And I'm pairing it with one strand of silk mohair and I used different silk mohairs in different colors that I had in white and gray and beige so that's not the same everywhere but it, I'm okay with that 
and you start with I like the band and then you knit the back side and then you pick up stitches for the lower part and then you pick up stitches for the lock and then I will put in um, a zipper here just have to find one and then I will also need some inner pockets for my phone or something and yeah, I think it will be perfect when I go out for walks to have maybe a little snack or yeah, my my keys and my phone and maybe a little knitting something and I think it will yeah turn out really beautiful and I also thought about that when when choosing the color that I wanted to do some embroidery on that and I thought it would be really beautiful to have lots of different like nature um, inspired pro embroidery maybe also some bugs some leaves some flowers I thought I could go really wild on this one <laughs> So I really have want to finish it and start embroidering. It'd be really fun to do something. I just have to look what to use if I have. I have a lot of fingering weight yarns like Jameson's um, Spindrift and so um, so I think those will be good for embroidery. And yeah, I think it, it is, that's a really fun, really fun project. I think it's really great that she wrote the pattern especially for one skein of yarn so if you have one skein of yarn it will be enough and I have quite a lot left so I have to still make to knit one more stripe a little bit like 20 more centimeters and then the inner um, pockets but I will not use it up I like everything and you can use different yarn weights so you can use the fingering weight yarn as well, paired with a um, soap mohair or something like that, and or yeah, a, a sport weight yarn or this is a DK weight or I think 300 meters. I think it's DK. So yeah, you can go go really really creative. You can go to the hashtag on Instagram. There are lots of different Dag Dagny. Uh, belly pouches I think do you call them belly belly pouch in English to get some ins inspiration they're really beautiful um, yeah beautiful um, belly pouches of different people so go check it out and yeah if you're interested I don't know if there are I, I never seen another pattern for a belly pouch a little belly pouch I can look, can look it up, and maybe I can link um, a pattern in a similar pattern um, down below in the description box. If I find one, otherwise I don't know. Maybe you have, if you really want to knit it, maybe you have to write the designer if she can translate it into into English. It would be great. Yeah, so this is almost done, really fun, just need to buy a zipper and it's finished and ready to be embroidered on. Um, and my next um, work in progress is one that I talked about in the last episode when I talked about my autumn plants and it's the Cameo Vest by check the designer's name mm. Olan Sik she's a French Olan Sik I will pronounce it that way French designer and I started it and have come quite a bit and I'm knitting this in the Fiber Co Allure is the yarn and it has so many beautiful colors I don't know if you can see it. It's this rust color from far apart, but when you go near it, there's yellow, orange, purple, black, uh, like oh, so many different colors. So beautiful. I really love it. And yeah, it's uh, cables at the beginning and the end. Like, yeah, <laughs> let me show you. And 
then this beautiful structured pattern on the body it's really 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 fun knit it's like addicting to knit this and I'm knitting this on 4.5 millimeter needles so it goes quite fast and I really hope that I have enough yarn because um, I think she used a yarn in the pattern uh, that is a little bit thinner let me check so she used Harrisville Designs Stay, Stay Light is the yarn and it has 230 meters per hundred grams 250 yards and the lore has um, 250 okay it's almost the same I thought it would this one was was thicker but yeah the problem was that I have only two skeins and the pattern says you need three skeins um, for my size and I only have two and I I want to make it a little bit shorter than in than the picture in, in the pattern that's the sample and I made the smallest size because it's quite um, oversized the, the vest and I wanted a little bit a little, little bit more fitted so maybe maybe I can get away with two skeins because I knitted about 50 grams I have 50 grams left and have come this far and I will yeah can it this much again with this this one I have left and I have one more skein and yeah we'll see maybe I can get away with two skeins I've looked on Ravelry how much other people used and it's yeah it ranges from like 500 meters to seven eight hundred meters so it's really dif difficult to say but we'll see otherwise I have to order one more um, skein I think I wouldn't mind because then I can use it to make like a matching hat or something. Mm, we'll see if 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 I will get away with two skeins. But I'm really really enjoying this knit. It's really fun, and I'm so in love with this with this color. And yeah, such a beautiful beautiful yarn. The um, cameo vest. And then I have one more um, project I have started almost immediately when I <laughs> got this book and saw the picture with the with the fern on the dark and on the black cardigan or sweater. And I was at the same day uh, I was sitting and writing on the pattern for my long cozy uh, cardigan I showed you in my last episode as well and I couldn't make sense of the beginning my notes were really just a mess so I had to I, I thought yeah maybe it's good if I start the beginning again so it just I know what I meant with my scribblings in my notes so I just um, used this beautiful natural black a new Chilean yarn. I don't know, I don't remember the name of this colorway, but I had um, four plates of this yarn, so I, I used it to test, yeah, knit the beginning again, to I know what I meant in the pattern, <laughs> and then I thought maybe I can just continue and make um, something new, new with that, and make like a, because I really wanted a v-neck cardigan, a simple, really simple v-neck cardigan. So I just kept going and yeah, only the beginning is the same as in the long cardigan. And then I changed it up and made it into a v-neck cardigan and did um, 
only an uh, I-cord edging um, with four, I think I made four buttonholes and it's quite cropped and I also made some waist shaping so I wanted to tight like really snug um, it has it doesn't have much positive ease uh, maybe five centimeters only and yeah the sleeves I have just come a little bit on the sleeves uh, sleeves I want to make a little bit more um, loose not balloon sleeves but uh, a little bit looser than the body with more positive ease and then I want to embroider this fern on, on this beautiful um, yeah cardigan I think it would be look really really beautiful with this on this um, yarn on this sweater or cardigan and yeah so this will be a pattern maybe one day right now I'm only knitting it so I will have so I can embroider on it and yeah but my, We'll see. If I'm happy with the end result, maybe I will write down a pattern. I'm taking notes just in case. And we'll see if I write down, will write down. I have so many patterns right now that I still have to write down the pattern. And that's the slow part when it comes to my <laughs> design process. So yeah, it will probably take me a long time if I decide to make a pattern of it out of it. But yeah see and I have yeah enough yarn to finish this I have one, one and up to big balls and knitting, knitting this with two strands only no silk mohair and on five millimeter yeah on five millimeter needles with my Chai Gu needles I really love them um, so yeah that's that's one more and I have not shown you this bag bag that I made this beautiful black linen bag with the embroidery on I was really inspired by oh, what's her name Instagram you may have seen her she makes these absolutely beautiful embroidered linen um, project bags I will put her name here I don't remember now and I was inspired by by her when I made this, and I had because I had uh, make made this black skirt last year, and I had some leftover fabric, so I decided to just make a simple bag and do some embroidery on it. And yeah, I think it turned out quite okay. Not as symmetrical as I would have wished, but it's it's the first time I made like this geometric embroidery so yeah I think it turns out turned out really really nice and yes so that was one more and the last work in progress is where do I have it here my um, acorn acorn socks I have the first one already finished since last year and I'm knitting on the second one right now I almost am at the part where I have to start increasing for the heel it's um, yeah toe up heel flap or I don't know, how do you call it them like when you knit toe up I don't know but it's a gusset um, under the foot like you increase like this and it's the first time I did such a heel and it fits my foot really really well actually and it has this beautiful beautiful acorn like pattern up here on the cuff and I have mentioned it a couple of times but I don't think that I will have enough yarn for that um, it's Phil Colonna Arvetta, the, the yarn. But my my mom and my sister and her two da daughters are coming in two weeks, and then we will go to Lynn Shopping. It's the like the nearest big 
town near us and I bought the yarn at the really beautiful yarn shop there and yeah I will I hope I hope that they will have like the same yarn I don't mind if they don't have the same um, like dye lot because I don't have the tag anymore so I don't even know what dye lot it was so I don't I just want the same colorway <laughs> and I hope they will have it um, otherwise I don't know I have to use a different yarn that is similar yeah but I think it will be enough for me to knit like maybe up here so I can finish the, the heel and then I need more yarn for these socks because I really want to finish this this pair this autumn um, yeah and then that's my last one one last um, work in progress I yeah one evening I looked at I had the sweater on and I thought that it was such not a shame but I did I still have so many leftovers from this still I didn't even use a lot of the yarn and I thought it would look really beautiful as a sock when I looked like at this part so I started casting on um, like 56 stitches is, is my usual for, for socks and the calf and I start, just started playing around with different colors um, it's not the same as here I just did my, my own thing with knits and pearls in different colors and yeah I still have quite a lot of this black and I have still almost almost one skin left of this grey um, Rauma Fino from, from this cardigan and then also like almost 100 grams of this I mean I didn't use a lot I only used it at the cuffs and up here and a little, little bit in the yoke but not much so I have a lot of this left and this beautiful rust color so these two are the BC Shetland and then I also using some um, yeah these leftovers from um, Jamieson's Spindrift yeah and I think I will use all of them just play it play around I don't I'm not sure yet if I want to make the whole sock in this pattern or only like the the leg part and then plain uh, stocking it for the rest of the sock we'll see i'm just having having fun right now playing around it's it's, it's a mess here <laughs> because i'm using so many colors but it's yeah, it's really fun and i'm yeah w really want to use up some of this yarn i will not use everything because i still have really a lot a lot left I think this is almost 50 grams and yeah maybe this maybe 30 grams so yeah and I'm not using anything with it this this time just as different yeah some di a little bit different yarn weights in the sock but it's okay it's a scrappy scrappy project and I think it will look really fun and beautiful and we'll see if I may maybe make this into a design as well someday <laughs> um, yes that was that was the sock I knitted this on yeah I'm, I'm knitting this on 2.5 mm millimeter needles yeah and what I also wanted to mention I when I I talked about my experience on knitting with like the shorties is that a sh shaigu shorties and so many podcasters i've looked they really love these short needles and when i bought myself these yeah, some last year because i wanted to try them and i knitted um i think i knitted a different sock with lots of 
um, cables and it was not fun at all. I didn't like it at all. My hands get got really cramped and I didn't know how to hold it because I'm used to have long um, when needles so my my like my hand can rest on the needle and here you can I yeah my hand cannot rest on it because they are so short the tips so yeah but I decided to get to just knit these socks with my this, these short needles because I really wanted to get used to it and I have so now I am this point that I um, enjoy knitting with these actually it took a while to get to, to get used to it because I really not yeah I have had to use a different technique I tried to throw the yarn at some point because I thought maybe that will m make it easier but I it didn't um, I went back to just continental my continental knitting style uh, but yeah I really got got used to it how I can hold the project and not yeah get like cramps in my hands and now I'm really enjoying it actually so yeah and I think I will continue using those maybe not on on socks that have lots and lots of details we'll see how it will go when I'm coming up here on this part and yeah maybe not on cables but yeah I'm on just stocking net or some simple structure pattern it's really it's really yeah okay um I think I would still choose like deep ends or magic loop if I have to, if I had to choose but I'm enjoying it now I not loving it right quite yet but we'll see maybe <laughs> at some point <laughs> I will love it as well yes so these two socks I have on my needles and I want to cast on more socks maybe I will cast on another pair of socks uh, when I run out of yarn for those and because I really want to knit the Ovis socks by the Petite Knitter and I have yarn for that and also the magical pinecone socks by the same designer is the acre socks Amina oh, I always forgot forget her, her name but I will I will put her name here and link the, all the patterns are linked to Ravelry in the description box down below yeah and the last thing I wanted to show you is that I have talked about in the in my fall autumn uh, projects planning video <laughs> I will, can link it uh, to you if you haven't watched it you can um, I will link to it uh, up here or here I don't know um, yeah but I have talked about the Peggy sweater that I really wanted to make and I mentioned that I didn't have yarn for it and then I went to my stash and I thought I would don't have really have the money right now to buy yarn for the, such a big project and then I remember that I had a whole box of yarn for dyeing for my dyeing yarn and yeah I, I took a white skein of this yarn it's the same I'm using for the belly pouch and the German organic merino yarn and I paired it with one strand of silk mohair and I knitted a swatch for the Peggy sweater and yeah it turned out so beautiful after washing it really bloomed and it feels, feels really really soft and wonderful and I think you can see the details are showing really well with this yarn combination and yeah I, I'm really in love with, with it so yeah I know I was really happy don't I don't have to buy the yarn um, so I will use my my dyeing yarn <laughs> for this project in white and I don't have any white sweaters so will be my, my first my first white sweater and I think it will 
it's really missing in my wardrobe like a, a light really light sweater yeah and I'm excited to cast it on I want to finish one big project first because I'm not a monogamous knitter but I can't have too many big projects at once because then I get overwhelmed and um, I can have many small ones that's okay like I have four or five small ones but not too many big ones and I have the cameo vest and um, the dark cardigan right now in Beauty Gym so I want to finish one of those um, first maybe the dark cardigan only the sleeves I think they will knit up quite fast and then I can cast this on and I'm really looking forward to that um, to knitting the sweater and yeah that's the last knitting um, project yeah I had to show you and if you follow me on Instagram you may have seen my reel but I made a little thing that's also a reason why I'm sitting here in the living room today not up in my crafting space because if you look here behind me you may see this little hobbit book nook I made um, a couple of weeks ago it was so much fun I was sitting up late every evening finishing that and putting in small details painting and carving and yeah and I will put in a little um, clip here where I can, you can see all the details of this little project. So yeah, that was really fun to make. Um, I followed a video on YouTube, I can link to it down below. And the, the guy who made this video, I think is, he's a professional miniature maker. So his version was quite a lot more advanced and used materials that I, I didn't have uh, or didn't want to like, um, yeah, buy. A lot, uh, lots of stuff to make this so I used things that I had at home and yeah it was really fun and I really wanted to make another one but I thought how cute wouldn't it be to make like a book nook that had a little yarn store inside I really want I really want to make that just think about it it's like small hangs of yarn and like small needles and yeah I already have a whole on Pinterest a whole um, pin, pin board how to say it um, with inspiration and ideas and I really wanted to make that Lucas thinks I'm crazy um, but I I just thought it was so much fun and what what cuter could there be than a book nook with a little yarn store inside so yeah we'll see when I have the time to to make that but yeah that would be so cool so so much fun and maybe I could film that a little bit because now I did not record anything when I made this um, but maybe I could do it and yeah talk a little bit more about how because th this time I will not have a video I can follow so I will just make it up myself We'll see when I when I have the time to make this. Um, but I would I would like to because it was so much fun. And last but not least, I want to talk a little bit more about my Patreon because I think I never have done that quite thoroughly on this podcast. 
So just a little bit um, of yeah, so just a little bit, a little bit of advertising for my Patreon. Uh, I can I thought I would talk you through all the different tiers. I have three tiers on my Patreon. Like the the first one is the Welcome to My World tier. It's um, like five five dollars or fifty fifty crowns. And uh, yeah, it's uh, you if you um, choose choose this tier you get access to all normal like a podcast episode ad free on patreon then you also get access to um all patreon episodes that i publish once a month i pub publish a patreon episode there i talk about my designs and all the process so it was it's almost a regular like podcast episode but only about my designs because I only talk about my designs here when they are already done almost and yeah and not I'm not talking about so much how I what I'm thinking about and yeah what the inspiration was so yeah there on patreon I'm really showing you everything from the start to the finish and changes I'm making and what I'm thinking and struggles I have and yeah ideas and inspiration and so such such things and uh, so if you're interested you can go there and you also if you are the first year you get access to all my you get 50% off all my published patterns in my Revelry store and yeah, so the, and the next tier is the sheep tier. It's $10, um, that 100, 100 crowns. Um, you also get yeah the benefits from the first tier, of course. And then you also get every pattern that I publish um, that will come out, like a new patterns that come out while you're a patron, you will get for free. So you will get, get access for free for a whole month before and after that you will have to pay 50% of the pattern yeah but for the fir first month you get will get every pattern for free that I will publish like now and yeah and then also there's something more that I've forgotten about yeah the last year is I'm doing some changes there right now but before I had um, like a yarn subscri subscription that was um, yarn, you got yarn four, four times a year and I'm taking, I'm not doing that anymore because of different reasons. If you want to know, you can become a patron and I'm talking a lot about that. But it's um, right now it's $20 and I think I will lower the price um, a bit but I will have different other things um, there instead um, for the yarn that are digital instead of me sending things um, yeah but if you are interested go check it out yeah go check it out if you're interested I'm so grateful for every patron that is, is joining and yeah wanting, wanting to support my work and so on and if you don't want to become a patron but uh, support me, you can buy a pattern in my Ravelry store or get me a coffee. I have a Kofi account and it's linked down below. And I'm really, really grateful for every uh, little contribution you can, you can, yeah, get me because I really want to get a new microphone for to filming podcasts because Saga dipped my old microphone she dipped it in water and now it's not working anymore so I have to buy a new one and I will also want to buy a new lens for my camera and you really really can help me out if you yeah buy a pattern become a patron or buy me a coffee and I would be forever grateful I was just editing um, the video and when I realized that I had forgotten to show you um, a pattern that is um, right now only available if you are a patron. So that is also a benefit if that you have when you become a patron that 
I sometimes will have only Patreon patterns. Um, and right now we have the Shepherdess Mitts. And yeah, they will be, they will release the pattern um, to the public in the end of October. But right now they're only available as a Patreon pattern. And I'm really happy with them. Um, I ended it in Jameson's Spindrift and some Rauma Fin Oil. And for this one I used Jameson's for the cuff and then I used Jameson's and some Heinspun actually. And I think they're really cute. And yeah. <laughs> I'm really happy how they look. And yeah, so right now, as I said, the pattern is available. If you become a patron on every tier, you can download it for free on Patreon. And yeah, in the end of October, I will release it. And then it will be available in both German, Swedish and English. Right now it's only available in English. Um, yeah, if you liked this podcast, please subscribe. I try to yeah, release a new episode once a month and sip and hit um, the like button if you like this video. Yeah, and if you want to see more from me, you can check on Instagram as well. I'm quite um, active on, on Instagram. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and I see you soon. Bye. <laughs>